Do you want to talk about um societies of control or that? Oh yeah, let's yes. He's uh, it, it. It just feels like he was so right, like on point. It describes us so well right now. Yeah, and every sentence is just low. Like there's no filler in that essay. It's all just it's just pure ideas, like compressed. <laughs> that tiny thing. I didn't even know about Deleuze before you introduced me to that. I don't even remember how I found him, <laughs> to be honest. I think I got like a little interest in him, then like Plastic Hill started making videos, and I was like, oh, this is neat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then I looked more into it. And... But if... Go back to, um, wait, what were you going to say? If we want to talk and go more into the concept of the control society. I actually like, cause I took a winter term class. I actually mm -hmm. talked about it and I posted that the plastic pills video about it because it was part of the class. It was a class about 2020, like the year mm -hmm. and trying to like come up with some kind of a thesis about like what this historical moment means. And so part of the, one of the subjects of study was like the information revolution and like artificial intelligence. So I wanted to talk about that because it's like, this is like, this has already philosophically been, the groundwork has been laid out to understand what's happening here. Mm -hmm. As far as uh, like, w one thing that I think is like crucial in that is the evolution from disciplinary, which was Foucault's concept, to control societies, and how, like, technological advancement changes the ways that social control functions. Yeah. That's true. Ted moment. <laughs> <laughs> did actually, do you know if Foucault commented on um, societies of control during his lifetime? What did he say about it? I don't know. I'm asking you if you know. Just, oh no! <laughs> was he dead yet or not? Um. When not was sure. it? When was Societies of Control Wait. written? I'm gonna go look. Um. Nineteen ninety two. Yeah, Foucault was dead by then. I think. Uh, that's too bad. I wonder what Foucault. Was I think Foucault was talking about biopower or something at the end of his life. Yeah. I'm not sure what that is. Though. I'm, I have yet to delve deeper into Foucaultian stuff. Okay. Very focused on Deleuze and Guattari. Okay, let's go back to society <laughs> control. <laughs> so, uh, the idea that, like, it goes from, like, um, like a box which you can't come out of to like a mold which adapts to your movement I think is just really representative, representative of how like control and power is exercised today like I'm not sure what you think about this I agree I think I can feel where you're going with that because the diff one of the differences between the disciplinary and the control society is that in the disciplinary society you kind of th there's kind of an expectation to discipline yourself but in the control society you don't even have to do that because you're already controlled just by virtue of existing within it mhm mm and that's the like ominous part about it is that the control as opposed to the discipline is pernicious it's 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 just there by virtue of your existence within the context of the society mm -hmm. well, like, i'm not sure i think like everyone has had that kind of soft control for a long time or maybe not well, um, per like, I possibly. Think it's just getting worse. Yeah. If we want to like connect this to broader concepts of power and like 
and things like that, then yes, I would say so. Because, like, um, this might also connect to the concepts of the socius, which I don't know if you know about I've that, but, like, the... seen it, but I, I don't know what it is. Like, capital is the socius of capitalism, and the, the like, king was the socius of feudalism. And basically, okay, the yeah. De- Deleuzian concept of what it does, kind of, is, is, like, that's the thing that redirects the flows to where it wants the flows to go. Yeah. Like... It channels desire, basically. Yeah, and entraps it wherever it finds mm-hmm. it useful and represses it wherever it doesn't. And so I think that type of thing has sort of existed throughout human history. Yeah, definitely. Even in, like, anarchist hunter-gatherer societies, most likely. <laughs> I don't think it's something we can ever, like, completely do away with, but probably, like make it less oppressive well this is one this is one issue that a lot of people have with postmodern theory and critical theory and such is that they say that it posits that power and domination of man by man are things that we just can't overcome i'm not sure if that's actually the conclusion that we're supposed to come to out of these theories though i think that it's Mm -hmm. it's it's more like a way of understanding like a more modern materialist conception of these oppressions and the fact that they go way deeper than we previously understood i don't think that the point is that it's like just natural and unable to be overcome. I think the point is just to analyze how deep it goes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, if um, Deleuze talks about, like, a future socius, like, post-capitalist. What does he say about that? Are you asking me? Oh. Yeah, yeah, I'm asking. (laughs) I don't know about a post-capitalist socius. That might be, like, some of Guattari's, like, further works i i'll have to get back to you on that i've heard that guattari writes like really he's really hard to read apparently well we'll see i want to read more guattari too because mm-hmm. i know that on like deleuze his earlier books on like individual philosophers were like are supposed to be pretty like easy to read and stuff and that his work with Guattari are much more, like, notably hard to read. Well, I think that they were doing a bigger thing than... Mm-hmm. Are you going to read Thousand Plateaus? Yeah, I'm going to read that after Anti-Oedipus. Mm-hmm. That's a crazy concept of a book, to, like, start it wherever you want. Yeah, and it's just it's it's like a book of books like there's a bunch of different stuff in there mm-hmm. that's crazy it's so like original i, I really love to lose this writing style i was i started anti oedipus that how you say it anti oedipus mm-hmm. right yeah and like i've never read anything like it before straight up like it's i don't even know how to describe it <laughs> I know what you mean, yeah. It just goes all over the place, but it's really, like, activating. Well, my experience as I read it is that, like, it comes in waves. Like, you get to parts where it's like, oh, I don't really have enough, like, background knowledge to understand, like, what they're really getting at here. But then you read, Mm -hmm. like, further pages, and it kind of, like, comes to you... It, like, sneaks up on you what what they're actually <laughs> saying. And then it's like, oh, okay. Like, I actually grasp this a little bit better now. Mm-hmm. You really have to I read it. it. Yeah. T- like, I really should take my time. Like, just sit down and, like, not, like, try to hurry or anything. Like, read one page in, like, five minutes if I have to. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know, just make sure I really, like, absorb it. Um, that I'm understanding what I'm reading. I'm going kind of 
No, I'm going kind of slow with it, oh. honestly. Okay. I think that's the best way to read it. Yeah, if you like, actually want to understand. You'll, yeah, you'll miss out on so much, too, if you, like, just skip through it. 